All right, you're more than halfway through the unit now, so that's good news. <clears throat> We're at 8.4. This is trigonometric ratios, uh, day one for the notes. So in this lesson, you'll be able to define three trigonometric ratios. And we're working with right triangles and only right triangles. We're going to write simplified trigonometric ratios. We're going to solve for missing sides of those right triangles using the trigonometric ratios. And then we're going to develop your problem solving skills. So let's understand what the word trigonometry means. So trigonometry here comes from the Greek words trigon and metron, which means triangle and measure. So basically, it's the study of trigonometry involves triangle measurements. Hmm. Now you learned something. A trigonometric ratio is a simplified fraction of two sides of a right triangle. Okay. So what that means is if we're looking at here, let's say we're using this angle right here. We'll call it angle A. So we're looking from angle A. We have this thing called sine, and the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if we're looking at A, the opposite side, you kind of follow along this side would be the opposite side from A. The hypotenuse is always the one across from the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. The other trig function is the cosine. The cosine is taking the adjacent side And dividing it by the hypotenuse. So I don't see the adjacent side, but if this is the opposite side and this hypotenuse, this side has to be the adjacent side. It's the side that that is touching the angle that you're looking at. So it obviously can't be the hypotenuse. It's the other side that makes and forms that angle. And the last trig function we're going to be using is the tangent. That is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay. You could go from this angle as well, but then this wouldn't be the adjacent side. This angle would be the opposite side. Or this side would be the opposite side. This side would be adjacent and hypotenuse. Some people learn it um, as... Uh, Sokotoa. So that means the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so, and then the ka part is the adjacent over hypotenuse, and the toa is T O A. So, Sokotoa. Could be one of the ways for you to interpret and understand this. So when we look at this, we're looking for the sine of D. So from D, let's mark our side. This side across is the opposite side. The one from opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And the one forming the angle is the adjacent side. <clears throat> so if we want the sine, the sine tells us take the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So from D, the opposite side is 7, and the hypotenuse is 25. From D, we want the cosine. The cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine says adjacent, so that's the 24 over the hypotenuse, which is 25. And the tangent is his toas, so the opposite side is 7, and the tangent and the adjacent side is 24. If for now we're looking from the other angle, so let me switch colors here. So we're going from E. From E, this side is the opposite side. So I'm in green here. This side is still the hypotenuse. That didn't change across the right now, which means this is the adjacent side. 
Okay, so now we're making sure that we're looking at the green, not to confuse you, but we're looking at the green letters, not the purple. Okay, so the sine of E, the opposite side is 24 over the hypotenuse, which is 25 from the sine, so opposite over adjacent. The cosine from E is the adjacent, which is 7 over 25. And these are familiar to me, don't you think? And the TOAS is the opposite, which is 24 over 7. So let's take a look at the, the sine and the cosine. Notice that the sine of D, hopefully you're noticing here, looking at these answers, that the sine of D here, this one here, is going to be the same ratio as the cosine of the other angle. And then you have... This one here, the cosine of D in this case, is the same as the sine of E over here. And then look at these two. You have 7 over 24 and then 24 over 7. What is that called when they switch from the numerator to the denominator to the denominator to the numerator? If you said reciprocal, you were correct. Those are reciprocals of each other. So, so using that idea, let's do the next one here. So, so A is here. Mark your picture up. Here's the opposite side from A. This is the hypotenuse side from A. Here's the adjacent side from A. So we have opposite side is 8 over 10. These are both even, so we can simplify to 4 over 5. Without even doing it, can we fill out another one of these in these boxes? If you said the cosine of B, you're correct, because the cosine of B has to be 4 over 5, because it's the same as the sine of A. The cosine of A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. See? So that's 6 over 10, which reduces to 3 over 5. And what one matches with that? The sine of the other one. They're opposites of each other. They're the, they make the same. And then the tangent of A. The tangent of A is the opposite, which is 8, over the adjacent. So toas, opposite over adjacent. So 8 over 6, which reduces to 4 over 3. And we should do the tangent of B, which we can look at it, or we know that it's the reciprocal, so it should be 3 over 4. Take, take a few seconds, pause it, okay? And let's see um, how you do on this next question. Okay, so let's take a look. I got You got some work here that probably just popped up for you because I asked you to pause it. So if you did the work correctly, from the D, the opposite side is the 6 for, called CE. And then you have the adjacent side, which is 6, from CD. And then you have the hypotenuse, which is 6 for 2. What kind of triangle is this? The, 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 look at some. So it's a right triangle and it's isosceles. So this is your 45, 45, 90 triangle that, that we've been, did that last unit on. So in this case, when we set up the opposite over hypotenuse, we got 6 over 6 root 2. You can't do that, so you had to reduce it. So here's my work down here. We got to get rid of that root 2, so you multiply top and bottom by root 2, and simplify it, so we got root 2 over 2. The numerator could have a root. The denominator can't. So these two, both the sine and the cosine, are root 2 over 2, which means that this is root 2 over 2, this is root 2 over 2, and if the tangent was 1, when I flip it, it's still going to be 1. 1 over 1 is still 1 over 1. So hopefully that came out to being okay. This next part is now making sure that your calculator is in, in the right mode. So we want to check your calculator before we do trigonometry. You want first want to make sure that it's in degree mode. Okay, that you have 
just a basic calculator, it should be like a D above on your screen. Or you could go to the mode in the, in um, your TI calculator. <coughs> All right, so here's some work of what we just did. So we brought back the, the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over adjacent. What you want to do in these examples is you want to figure out what you have first. We have the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the known side, so we call that the hypotenuse. From the angle we have, I like to mark the opposite and adjacent side. So from the 19, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side. So the two trig functions we are able to use here are the sine because it involves the hypotenuse and the cosine because it involves hypotenuse. So we write the cosine of 19 is equal to x over 15. We multiply by 15. And this is where we went to our calculator and did 15 times the cosine of 19. And notice it's the 14.18 right here. When we had the the we wanted to solve for y, y is the opposite side, and we still have the hypotenuse. So we set up the sine is y over 15. So we did 15 times sine of 19 and got the 4.88. Okay. So number two, let's do it live and let's do it together. So what do we have here from the 49? This side's the hypotenuse. From the 45, 49, this is the opposite, which means this is the adjacent side. So we have the adjacent side. If we know that, which one uses the A? It looks like the cosine and the tangent. Okay. So, so from the 49, let's say we want to solve X first. That's the opposite side. So which one uses the opposite and the adjacent side together? Looks like the tangent. So we're going to do the tangent of 49 is equal to x over 21. Go to your calculator. The 21 times tangent of 49. And we get 24.1 and then round that up to a 6. For my x value because you multiplied. The tangent uh, is out of the question. So then now let's do the one that's the y. So that's the cosine one. So if from here, the cosine is the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So in this case, we want the cosine of 49 is equal to 21 over y. Well, here's where we're going to have to do a little bit more work. You're going to multiply by y to get over it, but now y is over here. Then you're going to divide cosine of 49. So what I tell students is just flip-flop the y and the cosine. For not, so you want to go to your calculator and hit 21 divided by cosine of 49. So you do 21 divided by cosine of 49. And we get approximately, ooh, 32.01. Let's try one more together and then I'll have you pause it and, and try and see if you can do it together. So so from the 24, this looks like it's the opposite side. That's the one we have, so we'll put that down in our note box. This is the hypotenuse side, which means this ends up being the adjacent side. So the Sokotoa. The more you write it out, by the way, the better you get at it. The two that use the opposite side are the sine and the tangent. So we're looking at, from the 24, opposite, let's say we want x, so opposite adjacent. So we want the tangent of 24 is going to give us 6 over x. 
So what I was saying in the other example, instead of multiply by x and divide by this, just flip-flop these two things and say x is equal to 6 over the tangent of 24. You're solving it. Go to your calculator. 6 divided by tangent 24. Enter approximately, whoops, 13.48. Right? And then if you were doing the other side, so we wanted the y, the y is the hypotenuse, and we have the opposite, hypotenuse, and have the opposite, we're going to be doing the sine of 24 is equal to, the opposite is 6 over y. Interchange these two again. So we're going to go to the calculator and do 6 divided by sine of 24. Fourteen point seven five. Okay. At this point in time, I would pause it and see how well you you did um, on these next couple examples. Okay. So please pause it now and see if you can do the next three on your own, and then check your answers. Right. So we had. Hopefully, you did it there. over here. This is the opposite side. Hypotenuse, adjacent side. So you're given the adjacent side. The adjacent tells us to use the cosine or the tangent, depending on what we're doing. So if we want x, so x is opposite, in a, and we have adjacent, so that's the tangent. So we get the tangent of 42 is equal to x over 16. For the other case, we were doing the hypotenuse and adjacent, so that's the cosine. So the cosine of 42 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is y. So these are going to be solved differently. The tangent one is solved as 16 times tangent of 42, approximately 14.41. And the cosine is these two are going to interchange. So you're going to be doing 16 divided by cosine of 42. So 16 divided by the cosine of 42. And that's going to be approximately, let's say, 21.53. The box isn't up here, but like I said, mark your picture up. Opposite side, side, new side, adjacent. Okay, so what do we get? Opposite side, adjacent side. So we're looking at the sine of 31 is equal to 9 over... Why? Because it's opposite and hypotenuse. And then the tangent of 31 is equal to 9 over x. Calculator will help you solve both of these. So you're going to do 9 divided by sine of 31, giving you 17.47. And the uh, 9 divided by the tangent of 31 gives you 14.98. And last but not least, finishing it up, let's move a little quickly. So this is the opposite side. Here's the hypotenuse. Over here is the adjacent side. So when we're looking at it, if we want x, we're going to be doing the sine of 53 is equal to x over 21. And if we want the y, you're looking at the cosine of 53 
is equal to y over 21. Solve it. So we do 21 times sine of 53, 16.77. for x and for y we do 21 times cosine of 53 12.64 so there it is another video down have a great day